Hello and welcome back. Today I want to show you guys exactly how to install the latest version of Android on your Synology NAS to be utilized as a virtual machine but also so you can access all of the apps that Android have got out there for you and create a virtual alternative to your existing operating system be it Windows or iOS or OS X. Now in order to do this today we're going to need several things. First and foremost we're going to need a copy of Android. There's loads of ways to get it online but I recommend using android-x86.org where you can download lots of the most recent versions of Android. In fact they've got here even since this release I was getting ready to do this video there's an even newer version of Android, Android ready to download right now. So in order to download that, go to the latest version of it, go to FOSS Hub or one of the other options currently available to you, and then go down and download the version you're going to need. For me, I'm gonna go for the ISO version of the 64-bit 1.8 R4 version of this. You're gonna download, and there it will be on the bottom of the screen, and that will be done very shortly. Now, as that downloads in the background, I'm going to talk you guys through exactly how today's video is going to run. Now, we're using the Synology NAS today, and we're using the Synology DS1019 Plus. That DS1019 Plus, we've chose it because although it's not the cheapest NAS, it is probably the most affordable NAS to do everything from the Synology canon of apps. All of the surveillance and Office and Plex and stuff like that but also it's one of the earliest NASes in its portfolio that arrived with this tool, Virtual Machine Manager. And that's because it arrives with an Intel-based CPU. In order to install Android and let it run effectively on your system, you are going to have to use an Intel-based NAS from Synology. So that means it's going to need at least a four-core processor that is an Intel Celeron, an Intel Pentium, or an Intel Xeon based processor. There aren't many Synologies with a core, you know, an i3, i5, i7, or anything like that. There are a few in the older gen. They will work as well, but you need to make sure you have at least a four core processor. There's an x86 and 64 bit processor. And this is what we're going to be utilizing today in order to create our virtual machine. Now, as long as you've got a NAS that has the virtual machine manager, and you're using a NAS that's got that kind of hardware, along with four to eight gig of memory that you're gonna to need to dedicate some of it to the running of the NAS and some of it to the VM, you should have everything you need. What you need to do as soon as your image, your ISO is ready, you then upload it to the NAS and then onto the NAS it goes and from there you can then unpack your VM. So while that still downloads there in the background, we're gonna go into the Virtual Machine Manager and then from here, click Create. Now, from here, we need to select the right option. So for this, we're going to need to use the Linux option. Click there, and then after that, click Next. From there, we then have to check which volume we're going to be utilizing for this virtual machine. And it's worth highlighting the Virtual Machine Manager only utilizes um, um, Synology Hybrid RAID volumes it needs to be a synology hybrid raid and as well so that's an shr or you can there are other options out there but i do recommend using their own for that next we have to give it a name so we're going to call this one android we're going to dedicate a number of cpus and i'm going to be dedicating two cpus to this endeavor so those two cpus there are going to be two of the four that are on the nas so two cores are going to be running the nas in the background and two are going to be running our virtual machine likewise the four gig of memory in this device i'm going to dedicate two gig to the running of this vm and then the other two gig will run the nas with regards to the video card you can play around whichever options you want but the default the vm vga is more than sufficient after that click next and from here we have to assign the amount of storage this is where we decide just how much space we're going to give to this virtual machine for now i'm going to give it 200 gigabytes of space and that will take 200 gigabytes of the space on that volume and dedicate it and corner it off to the vm after that we click next and it will ask us how we want to use the network manager now when you set up a virtual machine uh, the virtual machine manager software from synology for the first time it will then ask you to set up a virtual network switch environment which you do from the off and then make sure you select that option to make sure that your vm can still communicate 
with the network and the internet connection on the NAS. After that, this is where we set up that VM for the first time. Now our ISO has not finished downloading yet. And what I'm gonna do is fast forward to the completion of this download and therefore uploading it to the NAS. Right now, I've got several different kinds of ISO that we're going to be using in different videos, along with this, uh, showing you how gaming works on a virtual machine on a more powerful NAS. But for now, we've got all of these versions, and I could run this older version of Android to show you, but I think for now, we should wait until the completion of that ISO right there, and then upload it to the NAS and get that started. So let's fast forward to the download and eventual NAS upload of that ISO. Okay, so the Android VM 8.1 R4 is uploaded to the NAS. As you can see, it's there on screen. It's that big old 800 odd meg file. I bunged it inside the folder here with a bunch of other VMs. So for now, let's make our way in and mount that virtual image of Android. Let's go there, that's the one right there. Let's double check. Yep, R4, we've mounted that. We've made sure not to use any other extra file types there. And we can move forward into the installation. Now from here, we select which users who have got admin, uh, uh, privileges to the Synology NAS can use the VM. For now, I'm gonna make it that only the admin can access this VM. Although it's worth highlighting that if you've got lots and lots of users, multiple users can access the same VM at once. They won't have different user interfaces. So bear that in mind if you are gonna have more than one user accessing this virtual machine. After that, click next and then apply to completely complete the VM creation. Click power on after creation to double check it works and then click apply. Now, creating a virtual machine uh, means that this virtual machine of a you know a virtual equivalent to a physical computer will live on the NAS. To access it, there's a few ways you can do it. You can use tools such as remote desktop connection, even tools from the likes of VMware and Hyper-V, but these aren't really appropriate to utilizing an Android VM. I recognize using OpenVNC or a VNC portal client app, all completely for free and all very easy to Google. When a VM is running, as you can see, the NAS will still continue to run in the background, so you can run it for Plex and surveillance, but bear in mind that a lot of the resources that you're going to be taking advantage of will have their own recommended memory and CPU utilization. So try to stay on top of the amount of CPU and memory being utilized by both the apps and the VM whilst it's in operation. At the bottom, you can also see lots of information about the VM whilst it's happening in real time. And you can make changes to this VM and a lot of its configuration, but you have to make sure when doing that, that you power down the VM, which you can then shut down regularly or force it to shut down in a number of ways. On top of that, you can create snapshots of the VM so you can revert to them, kind of like save spots. On top of that, you can share links to the VM if you choose, or migrate the VM onto other areas of the NAS or even clone it and make extra ones once it's powered down. For now, we're gonna click connect, which will allow us to connect to our Android VM in the web browser. If we click, click connect, as we can see, Android is now booting up in the background. For those that have ever bought a tablet for the first time and set it up straight off the bat, this screen is not gonna be unfamiliar. It's just deploying Android for the very first time. On top of that, at the bottom here, as you can see, I am using OBS to screen record this video. So it's worth highlighting that you may see, as you can see on screen, the frames per second and the resolution not being quite as good as you might hope at home. Just bear in mind, I am using capture recording software, which can play its part on the GPU utilization of any of these kind of screen records. But for now, this has been how to install Android as a virtual machine on your Synology NAS. It's been very straightforward, and the steps after this are incredibly easy. The same as installing any virtual machine on any system, be it physical or virtual. I'm gonna skip forward a little bit to the completion of the Android installation, but as I say, for the most part, this is all just clicking next and going with the defaults. Although you can choose to boot Android off of the ISO if you choose, or install it on the virtual hard disk you've created. But for now, let's fast forward to the full installation of Android. So here we are 
on the first time setup screen here where we can change a lot of the settings if we so choose and again it's like setting up a tablet or mobile phone for the very first time i'm going to leave it at english united states even though i am english united kingdom and from there we click start if you're using a touch screen device such as a tablet or even a laptop like the one i'm using that has a touch screen then you can utilize the touch screen functionality of your screen to navigate these options if you have a wireless dongle connected you can then use the wi-fi option of android if you've assigned that usb port to the vm but otherwise you are going to use lan connectivity moving forward so i'm going to click skip skipping these options it will say to you are oh, you you need a network to synchronize with google as you would again from your mobile phone or your tablet but you can set those up later with the network options built into android to use the lan connection or alternatively you can always just use a usb enabled wi-fi dongle that's supported by synology nas i'm going to click next even though that time is a bit wrong actually let's do this properly let's set the time right the time right now it's what is it 10 29 a.m we're going to go there but the day of the week is pretty right even if the the area of the world is absolutely wrong and what we want is daylight savings time good old great britain there at zero if we can ever get this scrolling thing to function correctly and then of course it's now decided that the time is incorrect because i've been playing with it way too much but for now we're going to click next and carry on to the rest of this installation we then name it so i'm going to call this android robbie and then click next this will create an account and it will let you personalize a number of the apps bear in mind you can create multiple users if you choose and these are all the standard google options which i'll let you make your own informed decisions about what you want to share you can add an email address if you want but for now i don't have an internet connection so i can't do that but again if you've installed or set up any android device from scratch before all of these options should be incredibly familiar to you from here you choose which kind of option you want to be able to see from the outset launcher 3 is the better of the two but taskbar does give you um, faster streaming options and this is more akin to using a mobile and this is more akin to using a tablet so make those choices for you if we click always it will always boot directly into that but you can flick between them to get better options and there you have it now we have our android um, 8.1 boot up here directly as a virtual machine and remember you can still access the synology nas and all of those different things in the background but bear in mind that as you can see the cpu and ram utilization is pretty high and that's because half the cpu and half the memory is always dedicated to this vm once it's in operation and this will always be displayed on the synology resource monitor at all times but navigating here can be done via a touch screen or it can be done with a mouse here on screen with a keyboard but i'm going to leave things there this has been how to install android as a virtual machine on your synology nas i'm covering all of the vms here and i am going to try to get a mac vm up and running as well as cloud ready the chromebook os2 but otherwise thank you so much for watching click subscribe to learn more click like if you enjoyed it and go to the nas compare links in the description to see more on this subject otherwise thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time